Hello there, Carstairs here, and in this video I've got this uh, 19th century percussion uh, muzzle-loading pistol. It's not a turn-off barrel, uh, there's no key to get the barrel off, so it's just standard muzzle loader. Um, nice little thing, especially with the pattern in the, ba in the barrel there, a uh, bit of leaf engraving, but um, it's uh, having problems with, I suspect, the mainspring, which is very very weak um, also the nipple uh, needs replacing um, um, and that could be one of the reasons why the mainspring isn't quite right because it's screwed in and that doesn't look like it's tightly in place uh, got a proof mark there but other than that there's no other marks on it, maker's marks. Um, we've got a screw for the trigger rather than just a pin and a screw for the hammer. So I think uh, we can start taking it apart now. It's coming out no problem. Yeah, no problem with that one. Okay, that looks all okay now. There's a number in there. 15. Now, right, what have we got here? Hmm. Piece of wood. Oh, it's not going to fly, is it? Mm, two pieces of wood, in fact. It's no good. Yeah. And see how loose that is. Right. So. Okay. The hammer doesn't look too bad. Just a lot of grime in there, but looks okay. Fifteen on there again. Right. Trigger looks uh, seal looks okay. Um, can we? Does that screw? It does screw down now? If we were to put the hammer back in. Okay, that feels a lot better. Okay, now it's not acting on the trigger, I suspect, because the trigger's too worn. Need to add some material onto that trigger. I don't think it needs a new spring. I think that one is fine. Um, I mean, what I'm thinking is, you know, the spring's not not hitting the top of the screw, which holds it in. So 
that screw seems to be holding it just fine. I think what we'll do is um, lock tight that screw in there um, stop it coming loose. I think that's probably the way to go. Um, so we're going to have to add material to the trigger. I'm just going to leave the spring in for now. Take out the trigger. Right. Yeah. Trigger is very worn. Uh, So I think what we might have to do for this is to use a plate where we can, because this um, panel doesn't come off, so I can't see how the trigger is interacting with the sear. Um, so we're going to have to make a panel to put these on and then I can uh, make adjustments to the trigger. So how I'm going to repair this is um, obviously I can't see what's happening in there, so I need to mock up where the trigger and uh, hammer would be. So I've tapped and drilled through a piece of scrap metal here. Um, and now what I'm going to do is <clears throat> set this top of this piece of metal in line with the top of the lock. So <clears throat> I know where the reference point is and then what I can do is <coughs> use a transfer punch Okay, so I've got my mark there. So now what I need to do is um, I'm using metric uh, screws to mock this up. So I've tap already tapped and drilled that for M4. So now I need to find the closest metric thread for that. Now that does go through, that's actually biting, so you know, as luck would have it, that, what's that, M3, it's probably M3. Um, so that will, that will accurately um, go through the trigger. Now I need to drill and tap that. As you can see I've mocked up my hammer and trigger now. Um, if we, if I just keep the trigger back, you can see that it, if you have, if you imagine that there would be the spring pushing on the hammer there it's just not holding, I mean I'm putting quite a lot of pressure on the trigger there and the spring would easily overcome that and then 
yeah it's not even it's not even holding on half so the problem is that uh, we need to add more material to the end of the uh, the, the trigger to make the sear um, just have a look uh, the the notches don't look too bad bit of rubbish in there but clean that out so if we look at the trigger the sear is completely worn away it's worn unevenly as well so yeah see on the on the back there big white patch so we need to add more material on there and then file it and fit it so I've uh, got my trigger um, added and added, uh, filed down the additional material now uh, and see how it goes okay so if I put pressure on the trigger as if it was from a spring and then we bring the that slots in there nicely now if I don't want to push because this isn't hardened but I don't think that'll come out and then if we go into full I think I've got that spot on first time now I suspect the reason this trigger was so worn is you can see the yellow there where it has been brazed before now I don't know what they used on there but I suspect it failed or wore away because they didn't harden it or they couldn't harden it um, and um, that's why it wore away you know if kids get hold of them they're repeatedly firing them dry firing them and that'll soon wear away a, an unhardened sear so uh, I'll get it back in the pistol and see what happens This spring is a, du a double duty spring. If it acts on the trigger, on the trigger as this bit acts as the trigger return spring. Mm, interesting. So we do have a definite ledge there and on that spring and yeah you can see where it's shiny there where it's worn so I think that acts on there to keep the pr the trigger pushed pushed forwards. Mm.
Ifta. It's working fine there, but obviously when unless it sits in there, let's try that. Right, so I suspect that that spring is either is is either worn. It must be worn. I mean, try try bending this that prong of it down. That might work. Then retemper the spring. Move along. Move along. So first thing we're going to do is to drill a hole and thread it as, uh, as a place to attach the spring to. I need to find a... that's just too big. think that will be all right that is three okay so I'm going to anneal this and then take it to the drill press So now I'm going to bend the spring. I'm going to use oxyacetylene so I can just heat just that bit up there and get a good bend exactly where I want it. So I've got my spring uh, bent into shape. Now I've got a screw which I've chopped down and put a chamfer on. Should be all right. Um, next, we need to file uh, cut off some of the excess on this spring.
ways we can get that bit off. Take that off with the angle grinder. So the original spring had a step in it and it was thinned out from there. So I've marked where I want the step. It's a bit difficult to get to, but try from here. I've got the spring roughly where I want it to be now. Um, it's not fully, it will need fitting once it's been tempered. So I'll have to grind off a bit and um, do the final fitting. But now I'm gonna temper the spring. So the first part of uh, tempering the spring is to heat it up so it's glowing hot. into some quenching oil. <clears throat> um, I'm using oil but you can do it with water as well. So from the oil I'm now going to wrap it in some tin foil. So I've got this hot plate here and I want the temperature to be about 330 to 360. So using this infrared gun, uh, temperature gun to check the temperature. And then I'm gonna put the spring on there and leave it for 20 minutes. So I keep checking the temperature with the thermometer um, because there's no fine control on this you can't just set it to 330 and it stay there you've got to just keep checking it unfortunately but um, yeah 20 minutes so it's been 20 minutes now so I'm just going to take that off and just let it cool there and uh, then we can get to fitting it so I'm get this open now um, what I usually do with springs is just work them in a bit, just gently. Yeah, like it's going to flex nicely that one. So now we want the spring to be resting in there uh, it's going to be too long yeah so what we need to do is grind the end of the spring until the hole lines up there 
I'll take that to the grinder and do that. Okay, so I've got this spring, I think, sorted now. Um, um, I have had to um, re-temper it a couple of times because the bow in the bottom part of the spring wasn't enough, so I had to bend it down and then re-temper it um, twice. So that's uh, a chunk of time, 40 minutes lost there. Um, and of course all the fiddling and uh, I've got this down now to where it works so it's all back together I had to use the old uh, cable tie to bring the trigger forward so that I could get the hammer in but it clicks into half there and into full nicely uh, I'm gonna dry fire it I know the world will end and you know It'll be raining fire and brimstone when I do this, but I'm doing it anyway. That's lovely. Yeah, so I'm very pleased with that. What it needs now, of course, is the uh, a new nipple in there and uh, cleaning and putting back together. So now I'm going to try and get this nipple out. I think I'm just going to have to drill this out. I might try getting it out with a, one of these removal tools. breaking up right what I might try doing is using this scrap screwdriver to try and turn it still in there
think what I have to do is just keep drilling it out using increasing half mil size drill bits until we get get it out. Brilliant, I think I've got it. Yeah, there we are. So that means that that's all intact. We might even be able to find out if we've got a comparable thread for it now. That's good. So now I'm going to turn my attention to the grip. Um, I'm going to clean it up with some methylated spirits and some fine steel wool plenty of dirt coming off it So I'm going to put the pistol back together. I've cleaned everything and carded it. Um, I've also added a filed down nut onto the end of the screw to strengthen up the anchor point for the spring. Um, a, just a spring. It's only got a few threads holding it so that should prevent it from coming loose again. So I've really cranked on that screw now to tighten it all up and once the trigger's in you can see it's holding it pretty well um, I mean it's just just how it is really it's I think it's a flaw in the design of these personally but uh, there we go
Now I have found a, a nipple which will suit. It's fortunately got the same threads. It's not coming out of half to full. That's fine. So now I've got the uh, grip all cleaned up. I did um, leave it overnight soaking in acetone because there's been a lot of um, oil staining in the wood and the acetone has helped to draw it out a bit. So I'm just gonna color the wood with some wood dye. So now I'm going to give it some finishing wax. So I've taken the uh, butt over to the buffing wheel and given it a bit of a polish and it's come out really nice, nice sheen on it. So I've got the pistol back together now and I'm very pleased with it. And I've filed down the screw holding the spring on, filed it flush with the frame. Um, interesting repair, making a new dual duty spring before, never done that before. Uh, goes into half, won't come off. Uh, yeah, so quite pleased with how it's turned out, especially like it with the um, twist barrel here. Um, nice crisp leaf engraving, the butts come out really well. I mean, you don't want it to be perfect because it's an old gun, um, but uh, yeah, thanks for watching.